Habitats gets it. Gets that a game can be easy to learn, smooth to play, absolutely inviting with a beautiful naturalist theme and full of tension. No, not the agony of someone trying to take what's yours, not the despair of being overwhelmed by too many choices. No, the conundrum that comes from a honey badger and a turtle being your two personal BFFs, but only enough rounds and relevant tiles on the market to satisfy the habitat scoring for one. Ah uh, yes, the market. Each game of Habitats is set up with a market arrayed based on player count with one vacant space for each player's Jeep. On their turn, a player may drive their Jeep to any adjacent tile except for the one behind them, claiming the new tile and arranging the Jeep so it points away from their now vacated former space, which itself is filled with a new tile from the bag. The freshly claimed flamingo or campsite or whatever it is goes into your preserved place anywhere you choose so long as it does not butt up against any white borders from your entrance or acquired gates. The reason you do this is twofold. First, each tile gives you points for reasons. Animals must be adjacent to habitats, which are connected regions of one or more tiles of certain sizes to score at the end of the game. Campsites have points for anything adjacent in designated spaces. Gates close off sections of your park, but score points once everything but the gate sides are connected. Tourism acquires points for expansive habitats or lots of little habitats. Flowers score points just for being themselves because they're chill like that, though also fulfill some unique insect and bird requirements. And watchtowers give fat points for whatever they say they do. Play alternates from player to player, each taking a number of turns based on the current round and player count, helpfully laid out in the year track. Then players score points at the end of each round for that year's objectives, randomized from a wealthy stack of 15 gold tiles with really diverse conditions set up at the beginning of the game. And that's pretty much it. As it says on your entrance tile, take, drive, draw, place. Complete several turns over the game's three rounds, score points on the luxurious and welcome dry array scorecard, and you're done. It's a game that flies by fast, but each turn is full of meaningful decisions that have big ramifications for yourself and indirect consequences for other players. Taking tiles from the market reveals new ones. Players compete over scoring goals. Do you lean into what's best for fulfilling the conditions within your own park, or do you compete for that delicious round end victory? And when deciding on what you focus on, do you go for what you know that you can complete, or do you risk for potentially bigger points? I particularly love that the Jeeps introduce a weird proximity basis to a drafting system with real consequences that aren't immediately apparent. Because you can't backtrack, when you go to a corner, Corner, you are forced into the tile beside you, and driving next to an opponent allows them to jump over you to the next available tile on its side. You're still only picking from a couple things each turn, there's just more depth and ramifications to the decisions that you're making. If I had any complaints, it's that the solo is only okay, taking away the goals and just seeing how you can do in 25 turns. And at whatever player count, it's easy to kind of get lost on how many turns each player has taken on account of how fast it moves, frequently double checking the number of tiles in your habitat to adjust the tracker. And while the premium upgrade of unique meeples to put on your tiles is gloriously adorable, they serve no functional purpose outside of maybe replacing the conditions completed badges that you place as you go, marking which tiles will score at the end of the game, and they don't really fit in the box. I mean, they kinda do, but only kinda. If you need to feel extra opulent, they are very, very cool but also ridiculously extra and kind of undermine the portability and speed of the game. But even without that, this revision and update of Habitats is another lavishly produced, super accessible, but deliciously clever abstract game in the BG Tables lineup. A game that's incredibly easy to learn, but weaves enough tension throughout to keep you invested and is charming enough to make you care.